notice again we could instantly determine even at this low power that this is kidney because all these guys here are glomeruli and everything surrounding them looks like it may have a lumen. So that's like the instant pattern recognition. So rather than uh, wallow around in our recognition of normal histology, you know that this area here disrupts our normal histology, doesn't it? And so does this, and so does this, and so does this. So let's go to any one of them. What are they? Well, they look really blue. Uh, so not only they look really blue, but there's a lot of cells. And that's why they look really blue. And let's take a close look at the cells. Well, guess what? They're all neutrophils. So that's a little microabscess, isn't it? Okay, but what do you think if you see microabscesses stippled many places throughout the kidney? Like here, like here, like here like here what would you think anatomically speaking well one of the things you have to strongly suspect is that something is showering uh, septic uh, embolic particles to the kidney from the arterial point of view this is a patient with bacterial endocarditis and those vegetaskins can shower uh, infected little particles anywhere and I think the kidney receives a very huge portion of the cardiac output what 30% uh, approximately. So you know that a lot of the blood flow from the heart is going to the kidney and that's what's causing these little uh, septic uh, abscesses uh, here and there and there in absence of large areas of inflammation like you might see with a pyelonephritis. This is classical. In fact from a logical and anatomic point of view uh, and a knowledge of uh, anatomy, physiology, and now hopefully a little bit of pathology you see multiple little abscesses within the kidney. Think bacterial endocarditis. And think of the organisms that are involved with bacterial endocarditis rather than the ascending gram-negative organisms, which might uh, be causing a pyelonephritis. Thank you very much.